what is the impact of Nigeria's suspension of access to Twitter on businesses? Reactions have been pouring in from all over the world about the impact on Nigerian businesses with an online presence and what this ban means for their operations. Well, let's have this discussion. Joining us now from our Abuja studios, uh, Charles Okafumba, co-founder, CTO of Convexity, and Ifoma Ilo, business growth consultant. Good morning to you both. Uh, if you start with you, you run a digital marketing company. How important is social media to businesses in Nigeria? Thank you, Rutos, for having me. Um, you're well aware what social media and the digital marketing space has done for businesses. It has democratized access. Access includes, you know, access to customers, access to media. And one of the great things, it makes small businesses control the narrative when it comes to, you know, building their reputation. Social media has made small businesses thrive. Even with a small budget, they, you know, launch marketing uh, um, um, uh, platform campaigns that make them thrive. And within a short time, a lot of small businesses have become, you know, household names. So social media has been very, very um, um, imperative for businesses. The benefits are overwhelming. We can't even begin to list them. Thank you so much for that, Ifama. Charles, let me come to you. You're in the blockchain space. Uh, what is the impact of this uh, ban on, I guess, you know, what you do? You're, you're part of the, of the field. All right, okay. Uh, I think being um, Elon Musk is um, a Nigerian, I think uh, the world will be happy right now, especially if there's no way to circumvent uh, the current ban on Twitter. So uh, th th there's no much effect, right, because... Um, uh, crypto startups have other medium of um, communicating with their publics. Uh, there is um, Telegram, there is um, Bitcoin Talk, there is uh, Reddit. So the only effect we are actually witnessing now is um, uh, the, the, the companies or the startups that are in the blockchain use the social media to easily communicate with um, their um, followers or their uh, users. So it will become a little bit difficult, right, for them to easily communicate. And also for users that are in the space that are trading and doing other stuff, it's, it, getting information from um, Twitter will, will be difficult because of um, this ban. So that's, that's just it. Ifi, let me come back to you. In some quarters of the country, there has been talk of Nigerians being encouraged to create their own social media network to rival Twitter. How practical is that? Can it have a positive impact on businesses with an internet presence? All right, to start with, you don't, you don't start um, training for war during the times of war, all right? But that said, um, a lot of times it has always been said that people should start, Nigerians and Africa should have their own indigent social media space. We've tried, a lot of entrepreneurs have tried that in the past. It did not work. A lot of them did not thrive because critically, Nigerians all, let me just put it, I'm limited to Nigerians. We are not used to becoming critical masses within internet space, that is within online platforms. We are just one of them, but we don't make critical mass. So doing it right now, maybe because of those ban, it might make it, you know, make a lot of entrepreneurs revisit that idea. But I do not see it as something that we can begin to look for as, an, as a solution right now. I don't think so. Thank you. Uh, Charles, uh, this, I want to put up um, this NetBlocks uh, impact. NetBlocks is a website that looks at the impact of uh, cutting off access to, I guess, platforms and what the impact, the, the, the cost will be. I'm trying to make sense of this impact. Let's just see if I can put it up there. Okay, so as at, uh, this was over the weekend. They're saying that what this block of, or rather, block of access uh, restriction, rather, to Twitter has cost us so far uh, $6 million. That's about $2.1 billion. How, how do you make sense of this? Because I'm trying to figure out how they come up with, this, uh, with these figures on what it's costing Nigeria to, be, to have no access to Twitter. How, how do they arrive at those numbers? Okay, so... Um NetBlock, right, they make use of um, a service, an online service, just as you said, uh, and a tool called um, cost of, um, uh, cost, cost of um, service, um, I've, I've actually forgotten the, the full meaning, but they make use of a tool called cost, and um, that cost checks... Um, cost of shutdown, the, now we're looking at uh, the screen. Cost, um, cost of shutdown. Cost, cost of shutdown. Yeah, cost of shutdown, yeah, thank you. Yeah, cost of shutdown. Right, and that um, tool make use of... Um, uh, data from um, the economic um, uh, indices of um, the, the global digital uh, trend or the global digital network. So with, from such data, uh, according to them, right, we have, it's a rough estimate. Uh, today, Nigeria should be losing about $18 million. And uh, if you look at um, 
social media usage, right? From Statista, the data we are getting from Statista says that uh, we have like 28 million uh, users of our social media. And out of that 28 million, Twitter is the sixth, and they have like 61% of um, users from here in Nigeria. Now, if this is 1% of 28 million people are actually deprived of um, burning their data, right? The company that is actually providing this data, they are not getting that revenue. And such revenue uh, is meant to be taxed by the government. So if you put all these things together, you will see that it starts adding up. And then again, you have small businesses doing um, uh, customer acquisition and retention. You have uh, small businesses uh, selling on the internet and all that. So if you put all this data together, uh, you will start getting rough estimate, which is what they are drawing from, from the global, um, global digital um, uh, indicators or data. Thank you, Charles. Ify, back to you. How does a business work around not having access to Twitter? I mean, this is the reality on ground. So what's the contingency plan? Contingency plan, start speaking to your existing customers through other mediums, other, other channels that you have. And this is why each time I do advise or consult with companies, I do tell them, do not build your empire on borrowed land. Social media is a borrowed land. Always make sure that you send social traffic back to your website or back to your email list. So right now, a lot of companies have jumped on it already. They're beginning to email their existing customers about Twitter ban and their communication. There are a lot of companies that will be affected are those that are you Use it for um, customer support, and that and Twitter has always been a way for businesses and all their clients to get instant customer support. So start communicating via other channels to your customers. Tell them about what you're doing. That is one thing, one way to build a contingency plan. And the next thing is let this sink down. If social media disappears tomorrow, will your business thrive? So make sure that whatever you're doing on, you're doing on social, that you channel those traffic back to your site. Thank you. Uh, if I'm Charles, back to you. This isn't confirmed, but theoretically speaking, uh, there's some chatter about uh, consultations with China to build an internet firewall to ring fence internet access around Nigeria. When I think of firewalls, I think of protection from viruses and hackers. How would this work within the context of controlling social media? Um, well, to me, I think the, even the consultation of going there is more of like a jamboree because we have... Um, companies down here that can actually build such. Uh, so I, I want to see such a move as um, a parent, right? Parent trying to stop their children or their kids from um, watching TV. And the kids say, oh, uh, mommy or daddy, I want to go to a neighbor's house to do assignment or to do schoolwork. And say, okay, yeah, fine, go. And uh, they allow it. Then they go to the neighbor's house and start watching the TV. So that is what is actually going to happen with um, such a type of a blockage. Because the government is trying to create like a pathway or one way door for the two major internet service providers to service other uh, sub agent or to service um, users here in Nigeria, um, the internet services. So uh, with such a tool, right, the government can easily um, block uh, access to some website or, so, or to some IP address, or they can totally shut down uh, the internet. So that is what we are seeing if such uh, comes to play. Uh, though there are, there are tools to circumvent such um, moves by the government, except a total shutdown uh, of um, the internet, which I just um, gave an analogy about now. Thank you, Charles. Uh, if you just follow up on my last question, um, as far as using offline channels and other channels outside of social media, what's, what's the impact on, I guess, you know, avenues to advertise, conduct business? Does that come at a, a cost for business now to have to transition away from using social media or Twitter in particular? We, um, Twitter is just one of the options of social media. We would not at this at this time feel it. And like you heard Charles say, Twitter is number six, right? Nigerians are Nigerians use Twitter, but Twitter is not the first, not the second. So we have we still have options to you know still build brand awareness, still communicate, still uh, encourage conversions and have sales. But the most important thing is businesses be, uh, thinking innovative innovatively beyond social media. Thank you, Ifoma. Uh, Charles, are, are tech companies becoming too powerful? Are they a threat to sovereign governments, or are we witnessing a natural shift in dynamics where open platforms encourage dialogue, grow more influential over time? What's, what's the mix? Well, true, right? Um, social media or tech companies are actually becoming threats, but uh, majorly to 
uh, governments that are actually losing legitimacy or to a uh, dictator. Um, if you, if I draw your mind back a little to um, Facebook and Libra, that is uh, the stable coin by Facebook, uh, they try to create um, a universal stable coin, like a global stable coin. And um, most of the governments around the world, they became jittery. They were scared. Why? Because uh, most of these tech firms, they have data, right? And also, they can control narrative uh, based on um, opinions of um, the content that is being generated right. by people. And also, they are not domiciled in... Um, they, they, they in the country, then the government cannot easily control them. So uh, it makes them, um, it makes governments that don't, uh, that cannot guarantee offline freedom of speech or expression to be scared because uh, if they cannot guarantee it offline, then online is where everybody runs to. And if people are running there and they cannot control that, then it becomes a problem for them. Uh, for for if somebody is actually inciting uh, violence or uh, people to pick up arm against a government, I believe uh, the security apparatus know what to do to actually pinpoint that person or to find a way around getting that person rather than making everybody go through uh, the same problem or trying to shut down uh, such a service. Because it's more of like um, a, a child that has a ball and everybody's playing the ball and he goes angry because he's being dribbled. He cannot play well and he decides to seize the ball and go home. So that is what like, we are saying. So I, I believe they are a threat, but uh, they can still be managed or can still be controlled because the expression of the people still needs to go out there and uh, one, one way to do that is via the social media or Twitter. Thank you so much for that, Charles. If he, who's the, I mean, we've already established that Twitter is only number six on the list used in Nigeria, but who, who's the worst hit from this decision? Is it Nigerian Twitter influencers that have millions of followers and earn revenue from promoting brands? Who, who, who else is, you know, badly hit from this decision? They are one of the worst hits, but they are not the worst hit because a lot of, um, Twitter influencers who have built on Twitter also have other social media channels that they can rely on at this time. The worst it are those are tech companies that built natively on Twitter. There are companies that built apps and tools on the Twitter API because that is one way Twitter generates revenue. So for them, it's a complete shutdown. For Twitter influencers, they can rechannel their energies through other existing social media. So for businesses that are actually core tech, Call solutions providers using Twitter API, they are the worst. Some of them are social media tools, social, social media management tools. Those are the worst states. Thank you for that, Ife. We've got a couple of minutes to go. Charles, uh, what about, um, I think you deal, you, you both deal with, uh, I assume, foreign uh, investors or foreign interest in Nigeria. Is there any impact on that front, Charles, with respect to how the perception of what this channels out to the outside world? So um, with such a move by the government actually sending like a wrong sig signal, uh, the ease of doing business, right? That's one. And then uh, you get some uh, startups that do promote their product or promote their businesses. Some of these people, some of these VCs or investors are actually online and they tend to uh, follow these companies to see what they are doing or see their progress or monitor their progress before contacting them and all that. So this can actually have an effect on such uh, companies, though there are still other mediums of uh, communication that these companies can use. But all in all, I believe um, the industry will just move to other um, social medias that are out there. Like I said, uh, Twitter is just number six, so there are still other ways of um, reaching out to the world. All right, uh, Charles Okafomba, uh, co-founder, CEO of Convexity, and Ifoma uh, Ilo, growth business, uh, business growth consultant. Thank you both for talking to us about the impact of the uh, Twitter ban on Nigerian firms. Appreciate your insights.